Ephesians. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. Amen. How many are happy in the Lord today? Are you? I'm just going through what I ought to leave out. What I'm trying to leave out. I want to preach everything. One preacher who came. We had a class called Preacher Boys. In Bible college. And we had a. We had an old evangelist come. He's with the Lord for a long time now. His name was Mercer. And he had this little saying. He said, quit your meanness. <laughs> Amen. Quit your meanness. Um, we got lots of meanness today. <clears throat> but you know what you always say? He's like, man. He had this gravelly voice. Man, always have more behind the counter. <laughs> When you preach, always have some in backup. All right. Hey, maybe the preacher should get to Ephesians. <clears throat> All right, everybody there? Anybody need a Bible? Boy, we're gonna we're gonna mention some some things today. I, I don't know if YouTube will like it. Uh, so we'll have to. <laughs> so. If, if you don't see it on YouTube, maybe go over to Rumble. Okay, I got a Rumble account. Okay, all right. So, uh, anyway. Oh, boy. Now now that I said that, uh, the little guy in the basement who's monitoring me, you know, who hasn't gotten out of his mom's basement yet, uh, he's going to flag him, put him in jail, put him in internet jail. Oh, brother. Lord help us. Ephesians, are you there? All right. We've been having a great time. Yes, the believer's promise. We talked about the praise of the, and, and the believer's promise and power. We talked about... Uh, chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's go there. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Amen. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given me to you word. And he goes through this chapter. And, uh, uh, you know, one thing I didn't mention. How many of you have a life verse? Do you have a life verse? Huh? What's your life verse, Bob? 2 Corinthians 5.17. 5.17, all right. Let's say it with Bob. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. Anybody else have a life verse? Yes, Frank. Mine would be Luke 9.26. Okay. Whoso should be ashamed of me and my word. That's good. Then should the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come. You know, that's kind of what we're doing here, isn't it? We're trying to prepare you so you won't be ashamed of the Lord when he comes. Right? You got one? You said you had your hand up. Amen. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Anybody else? Anybody on this? That's the spiritual side. Anybody on this side? Brother Bert! That everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I like that. Amen. Anybody else? Come on, Noreen, you got one. She's trying to dig one up. No, no, you got to be having one. Don't be digging one up now, all right? Okay. I have one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. Is that weird? Okay. Because... Jeremiah 15, 16. I, honestly, I got this on my knees and I was asking God, do you really want me to be a preacher? Because I didn't want to get into this thing unless he was in it with me. Amen? And so I was in Jeremiah. And if you read Jeremiah, the first 14, 15 chapters, you, man, this is pretty dark stuff. 
you know, judgment, so forth. And I had just marked off to Jeremiah 15, 15 my very next verse, because my very next verse was Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God. Man, I jumped up and whooped and hollered. <clears throat> Some of the guys, what, what's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. <clears throat> Something's right with me. God's called me to preach, and he not only called me to preach, but he confirmed it in his word. Ephesians chapter 3, where you are right now, and verse 8 is my New Testament life verse. Let's read it together. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And God's people say, that's me. Say, who are you? Big shot? Nope. Who are you? I am the least of all saints. Now, this world wants to drag us, kicking and screaming, into, quote, pride month. Pride month. And so I've been kind of thinking about that. And you get these messages from people or posts, right? Well, I, I have straight pride. Boy, I'm proud that I'm straight. <laughs> I, I, I thought, yeah, that's kind of nice. It's, it's just, you know what? God gives us. God gives us, listen closely now, this is important. God gives us different terminology. Did you know that? Now, I've done an extensive study on pride in the Bible. God doesn't think much of pride. Did you know that? He tells us, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I was reading, Jesus said, except you humble yourself like this little child. I read a message this week from one of the greatest men of God I've ever known. And I think the title of the message, something was like, was something like this, Salvation is Easy. And I could not disagree with him more. Salvation is not easy. Salvation is simple. Amen? But it's not easy. Why isn't it easy? Because of our pride. Because we got this, this, this thing where we, where we hang on to that sin. It's like hanging on to a rattlesnake, right? And it keeps biting you. <laughs> Let it go. Salvation is not easy because of our old nature, our sin nature. That says, you know what? I can do this on my own. The opposite of your verse, right? I, I can do all things. No, you can't do nothing. I can all do all things, what? Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And so salvation is not easy. Salvation is simple. So simple that a little child could understand. Amen? And Jesus said himself, except you humble yourself like a little child. And so God, uh, let's go down, down to the next one. That's where I want to go first. Okay? And so I want to, in case... I don't get this. I want to address this right away as we get into this month of June. First Lord's Day of June, amen? First Lord's Day of June, great to be in God's house. Let's read the last verse of chapter 3. Everybody together, <clears throat> everyone, verse 21. Ready? Ready? 
Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, God's people said. Amen. And so, you know what that tells us there? There's a word. Okay, here's a word. It's called perpetuity. Okay? We believe in biblical ecclesiastical perpetuity. What does that mean? That means we believe that down through all of the ages, there was always New Testament biblical Baptistic churches. Now, what do we mean when we say Baptistic? We mean the Bible is the sole authority for faith and practice, and God's people say. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, biblical. So, there was a, God always had a testimony. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get into the dark ages... I mean, the light, I mean, the, the light got really dim. But God always had someone standing up. Whether it was the Waldensians or the Donatists or the Bogomols or the Albigenses, there was always someone. Thank God. And they were passing on the faith. Now, sad to say, my generation has flubbed. Somehow, we have not passed the torch of faith to the next generation. And I was hearing, I'm not even going to say who the preacher was. He's going around America right now. And, and uh, he's talking about the millennials. And how the millennials are and mass leaving the faith they were once taught. Heartbreaking. Because then, what comes after the millennials? Gen, Gen Z, right? Gen X, Gen Z, whatever it is, okay? Because that, that generation after the millennials, they're really in trouble, <clears throat> right? And so, it's amazing how quickly a society, a nation, a neighborhood can go down. This government we got set up, this tripartite government, right? Executive branch, legislative branch, judicial branch. This, this and by the way, we are not a democracy, okay? Right? We're a republic. We're, we're a constitutional republic. Okay, to say, well, our democracy, democracy. No, it's not crowd rule. It's, 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 it's a representative uh, republic, constitutional republic. <clears throat> it was not set up for ungodly people. <clears throat> Doesn't work. Will not work. Robert, do you mind if I mention what you shared with me yesterday? You're working at Fry's? Okay. So Robert's working over at Fry's, right? And you know what they do over there? I'm talking about Fry's right here, First and Grant, right? These people walk in, pick up what they want, and walk out. They just walk out. And, well, Robert, you know, he's a Christian, right? He says, oh, yeah, that's right, Leona, you worked there too. All right, you, you're, which one are you at? I'm in Silver Valley, of course. Okay. You have the problem out there? Yeah. yeah See? It's everywhere. They're just, it is. And even down to Reed Ranch, I mean, we have the most beautiful fries you can imagine. I mean, they sell furniture in there. I mean, it's, it's really nice. Fry's signature, okay? And I, I asked the gal up the front, and I said, do people just walk out? And said, oh, yeah. So anyway, going back to Robert, <clears throat> this guy walks out, and he, he had a whole backpack filled, right, with, with stuff. And he walks out. Well, what would you do? He's working at Fry's. Mm -hmm. He went after him. Was, oh, Circle K, yeah. Circle K, oh, that's even worse probably. Yeah. Okay, Circle K, yeah. 
Okay. I, five finger discount. Right. Oh, Lord, help us. So he goes after him, right? He goes after the guy. And the guy can't believe that he came after him because he's entitled to whatever he wants. Right? There's an entitlement mentality. Well, Robert, he gets the backpack, right? And you take it back to the store, right? You got the stuff he stole, right? Everybody give him a hand. Amen? All right. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. Frank's got some other stories about loaves, right? Uh, Loading up the cart with all the tools and going out. Okay. <clears throat> I, I don't know how any retail establishment makes it. I tell you, it's, it's, it's frightening. So he gets back and he brings the stuff back and he says, oh, there it is. And the guy, what are you doing? The manager, right? Yeah. What are you doing? What do you mean, what are you doing? I brought your stuff back. The guy stole it. You can't do that. That's not our procedure. You let him go. Oh, I guess the word's out. You can do this. Right? Until you got to start getting a lock, lock door system. And where? Yeah, there you go. All right. We're, we're in trouble, folks. We are in trouble. Because these stores cannot stay open. Because when you steal something like that, you know what? You got to sell ten more just to make up for that one. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's true. That's true. Robert didn't care, man. He, he he's doing trying to do what's right. Right. Okay. But this is the world we live in. I'm trying to explain this government. The way it's set up in this society, it wasn't made for the wicked. You're on your honor. You're supposed to have conscience. And people's conscience are seared right now. And now we got the whole, quote, pride month coming along. I want to tell you something. God hates pride in any form. There's only one verse in the whole Bible. You can believe me. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why that this is sensitive to me. I had an evangelist come, <clears throat> and he said, "All pride is not bad, and all pride is wicked." You know, and I said, "Yeah, you know, is that wrong to say, you know, to your kids, well, I'm proud of you, you know, if you get good grades, and you know, that's good." And so, so he addresses this. He says, "Oh, well, so that's good pride," you know. He, so I was determined to find some verses that God thinks it's okay if it's, you know. So the only one I found, it says, God rewardeth the proud doer. <laughs> That's it. That's not really good. <laughs> no, God rewardeth the proud doer. <laughs> I don't know. That's the only positive. But every other term of pride in the Bible, God condemns it. He says back in Proverbs 6, he says, he says there, he says, there's, there's seven things that the, that the Lord hates, a proud look. Amen. <laughs> Reminds me of a current, a recent president we have. <clears throat> okay. You know, I'm not throwing stones. I'm just saying, man, you, you can't have a proud look, man. You got to watch your, not your, just your look, but your words, right, and your actions. God tells us, commands us to be, he, God hates pride, but not only does he hate pride, he, he especially hates pride about wickedness. <laughs> Let's be proud in our perversion. Whoa. That's like, Judge me. You know, you might as well just say, you know, the Jude, Jude verse 7 so it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? First Peter 5. I'm, I'm just telling you, God has, a, has different words for Christians. Pride should not be a part of our vernacular or our life. He uses different words. He says, 
exalt. Let's go back to uh, Psalm 34. Could we go back to Psalm 34 quickly? Glory in the church. That's one of the words that we give glory to God. Amen. It, and, and to be honest with you, I was thinking about it. I thought, well, I'm proud of Jesus. And, you know, that kind of has a weird ring to it, right? I'm proud of Jesus. No. He wants us to use different terminology. We exalt the name of Jesus, right? We... <clears throat> Well, let's read this together. <clears throat> Psalm 34. It's right up here. Verse 1. All right, let's read it together. Here's, one, here's, here's the first word, one of the first words, uh, as opposed to pride. So the world can celebrate pride. We're going to celebrate the Lord. <clears throat> okay? And what's the first word? I, I will what? Bless. bless. Isn't that a good word? Bless the Lord. Let's read it together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. There's another word. Praise. Amen. So instead of pride, it's praise. Now here's, here's an interesting word that's almost a negative word too. Verse 2, everybody. Let's read it. My soul shall make her what? Boast in the Lord. Everyone, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, we know in Ephesians 2, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we don't boast in ourselves. But in this particular verse, we can boast in who? The Lord. Amen. And here's a couple other words here. Ready? Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together, God's people said. So we magnify, we exalt, we glory, we glorify, we lift up our Lord. If we boast at all, we boast in him. Our boast is in him. Let us always remember that, beloved. And let's uh, humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may, uh, in due time, he, he will exalt. We're going to have our time. We're going to have our time. Uh, there's a song. It says, oh, that will be glory for me. And we're going to be transformed, right? Get a new body. Bert reminds me regularly. <laughs> new body. <laughs> new brain. <laughs> New eyes, new ears. God has to give us a new body just so that we could actually be in his presence without being consumed into cosmic dust. How close do you think you could get to the sun without it consuming you? Not very close, right? Our God is a consuming fire. The sun of righteousness. That's what Jesus is referred to in Malachi. The son of righteous shall rise with healing in his wings. So, I was going to say, like I say, to counter the quote pride month that I'm proud of God. But really, there's a, there's a, whole, different, uh, 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 there's a whole different group of words that God wants us to use for him. <clears throat> Amen. And so there is a sophistic, very sophisticated attack upon the foundations of America right now. Okay? I mean, onesies, you know, for one-year-olds, two-year-olds. I, I tell you, it, it, it's, it's just frightening. It really is frightening. All right? So let's stay close to the Lord and understand the continued glory. I want to go back now to chapter 3 of Ephesians. Are you there? And notice it says in verse 16, we mentioned this before, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened. Riches of his goodness, riches of his grace, and the riches of his glory. We have a rich God. Amen? Amen. To be strengthened with might by his spirit where? In the inner man, the inner woman. God, you know, God wants to do some interior decorating in your life. Did you know that? He really does. 
He wants to do something inside you. And when, when you get the inside right, the outside will be, the outside will match up, right? Remember that back when <laughs> the Lord, they, they came to him. And they said, well, what do you think? He said, and he took a cup, right? He said, uh, the cup, make sure the cup's clean on the inside. Right now, I like my cup that I'm drinking out of to be clean on the inside and the outside. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if I had a choice, I'd sure want it to be clean on the inside. <clears throat> Maybe on a work site, right? There's going to be some dirt on the outside, but it's got to be clean on the inside. And so, the inner man, the inward man. 2 Corinthians 4, Brother Bob, you, you mentioned 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, right? It talks about, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day, right? For this which cause we, we faint not, 4, 16. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Listen, uh, everyone in this room is having some sort of a physical issue. Am I right? Back, respiratory, cardiac, whatever. Face. You wish. I don't like my face. <laughs> now, I have a lot to be humble about. Amen, Dick? <laughs> I got a lot to be humble about. I was reminded that my brother, Pastor Andrew, I was the assistant pastor in Milwaukee Faith Baptist Church. By the way, an incredible church right now, one of the leading churches in the Midwest, Faith Baptist Church in Milwaukee. And he used to tell me, well, you sure have a lot to be humble about, don't you? And you know what he said to me? <laughs> he kept me humble. He said, but for the grace of God and your wife, you're, you're nothing, you know? Amen. Amen. So that's where I got that verse, right? Yeah, under the least of all saints, you know, and, and, and pounding me down. That's why I'm so short. You know, I mean, I've got no hair up here. Okay. 2 Corinthians 4.16. The inward man. We all have something going on we don't like about our bodies. But I want to tell you something. The inward man can be renewed day by day. For our light affliction, he talks about which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen? And so here we are. Inward man. How's your inner man? Do you feed it every day? I know you feed your outer man. Right? Do you feed the inner man? Very important. And Christ is within, <clears throat> rooted and grounded. Let me, let me just give you, if I could, Ephesians chapter 6. You're in Ephesians 3? Ephesians 6. Let me just give you some encouragement. Brother Frank was challenging and gave a testimony about encouraging each other. Let me encourage you if I could. You say, well, what word do you have for us today? Here it is, chapter 6 and verse 10. Matter of fact, it's right down here. Right here, in case you forget. Right there. Let's read it together, Ephesians 6.10. Everyone, and this, the, he says, don't, don't forget this. Ready, everybody? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hmm. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Or as the old southern preacher said, against the willies of the devil. <laughs> right? For we wrestle not. You know what Leonard Ravenhill said? He said, that's your life verse right there. We wrestle not. <laughs> I don't want to be inconvenienced. <laughs> right? What is that? The, 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 the devil as a, goes around like a, a purring cat, who is thinking whom he may inconvenience. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That must be the cat version of the Bible. All right. <clears throat> Wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, beloved. One of our soul winners, Brother Alex Paz, he goes with us. 
because they don't have any soul winning at their church. You know what the pastor said? Well, people don't want to be uh, bothered. That's the term he used. People don't want to be bothered. Well, that's true. I don't like people coming to my door. But you know what? God's commissioned us to go bother people <clears throat> in the right way. Sometimes we need to be bothered. Amen? Mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're comfortable in our sin and where we're at, we need somebody to come shake us up a little bit and wake up to eternal truths, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And so we got principalities and powers. Anyway, uh, he was rear-ended so he couldn't come yesterday. <clears throat> Principalities, powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And what is that? That is the spiritual echelon of the devil. That's what that is. So we got privates here, private demons. We got corporal demons, sergeants, and principalities, powers, rulers. Okay. Spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to see this. This is very important, what I'm going to say here. Verse 13. Here we go. Everyone. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in what? The evil, the evil day and having done all to stand. God wants us to stand. He doesn't want us to be jerks, but he doesn't want us to capitulate and give in either. Right? He wants us to stand. No, I don't agree with that. Well, you're going to jail. Well, okay. We'll have revival in the jail. What does it say in verse 14? Stand, everyone. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm not talking about being self-righteous. I'm just talking about standing in an evil day. And we are in that day. We have a nation that keeps moving and moving and moving and moving. And then we, we come to place. How on earth did we get to this place? People just walk in the stores and walk out with whatever they want. You walk into Target and there's a whole display on, yeah, let's have the let's have perversion on on, on you know yeah, on the onesies. It's incredible. He wants us to stand. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Look, this isn't for wimps. What God is doing, you know what he's doing? He's weeding out the chaff from the wheat. Which one are you? What are you doing? Are you chaff or are you wheat? Okay, let's go back. We could one. Let's go back quickly. <clears throat> We have the covenant promise to the Gentiles. I'm thankful Jesus came not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles. We have Christ in us, in, in strengthened with spirit in the inner man. Christ with us, rooted and grounded, right? Not tossed about. Uh, chapter 4 and verse 14, with every wind of doctrine. Like I said last week, and I'll say it again, verse 14. Chapter 4, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. You know what? You can find... I don't even know where my phone is. You can find anything you want on that internet. You know that? There it is. You can find anything you want here. And that's what's ruining us. Is Well, I saw this... You know, we're supposed to worship on Saturday. I mean, did you ever hear of the resurrection? Did you ever hear of Acts 20 and verse 7? They met on the first day of the week. Did you ever read Roman, Revelation 1? I was in the spirit on what? The Lord's, the Lord's day. day. Okay. 1 Corinthians 16. Let every one of you lay by him in store on the first day of the week. Why? Because Jesus rose on the first day of the week. We celebrate his resurrection. Nowhere in the New Testament does it say 
we are commanded to worship on Saturday. No, the other way around, the Lord's Day. And so we have this rooted and grounded. Then we have the comprehension of the promise. Notice verse 18, everybody, everybody uh, may be able to what? Comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know what? The love of Christ. So we have a comfort, the love of Christ. We just sang that chorus, for God so loved the world. Are you thankful that God loves you? The man read the verse this morning. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. It doth not yet appear unto us what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What a glorious day that will be. But God loves me now. The Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He didn't just die on the cross for the world. He died on the cross for individuals in the world. He died for me. I got a feeling when that shout is going to happen, maybe he's going to say my name. Cliff Lawton, come up hither. <laughs> uh, what a glorious day that'll be. i tell you what, I'm living for that moment. I know what you're living for, but I'm living for that moment. That's reality to me. This is all just ephemeral. This is what we call ephemeral, transitory, vaporous, vapid, empty. All this is going to be burned up, but we're fighting over it. We fight over little pieces of dust. <clears throat> God loves me. I'm thankful for his love. I bask in it, bathe in it every day. I try to comprehend it. It's a comfort, isn't it? John 3.16. Let me tell you what this is quickly, and we're going to go. Here it is. If you don't know this, all right, John, or excuse me, Ephesians 3.18 is merely a commentary. Get this now. Are you with me? Are you with me, Cassandra? Yeah. You need to stand up. Go ahead and st stand up and wake up. I like that. Brother, Brother Frank does that. He gets up and walks up. <laughs> Stay awake, right? Yeah. All right. Look at, comprehend, process, right? What is the, what? Breadth and length and depth and height. Okay, let's take, let's think about that for a moment. The breadth, for God so loved, what? The world. That's the breadth. Okay, the length that he, what? gave his only begotten son. Amen? Mm -mm. Depth, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Height, but what? Have everlasting life. So really, John 3.16 is in Ephesians 3.18. Read out of here, if I could. <clears throat> This gives you a little commentary on John 3.16. God, the greatest lover, so loved the greatest degree, the world, the greatest number, amen, that he gave the greatest act, his only begotten son, the greatest gift, that whosoever, the greatest invitation, amen, <laughs> believeth the greatest simplicity, simple, not necessarily easy, but simple, the that, 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 uh, excuse me, the believeth the greatest simplicity in him, the greatest person, amen, should not perish the greatest deliverance, but the greatest difference, have the greatest certainty, everlasting life, the greatest possession. That's good, isn't it? All right. So God loves you. Here's the question. What are you doing with this love? What are you and I doing with his love? Are we squandering it? Are we wasting it? He loves you so much that he sent his best.
take it, cherish it, magnify him, exalt him, glorify him in your life. And to know the love of Christ. Read verse 19, everybody. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that she might be filled with all the fullness of God. D.L. Moody was in New York City. He was spending time getting closer and closer to the Lord. And he said, he was preaching in New York City, and he said, one day as I was praying, he said, the love of God came over me in such waves, in such waves. He said, I had to ask the Lord to withhold his hand, for I thought I might die of exhilaration. He said, after that experience, he said, I ran out. <laughs> he said, I had to tell somebody. And he, ran out, and he grabbed the first man. And he, and, he, and, and he grabbed that man and he said, Mister, do you know Grace? And he said, Grace who? <laughs> and he said, the grace of God that bringeth salvation to all men. And he led that man to Christ on the street of New York City. Pray for Brian Kelly, by the way, that group. We got, we got, a, we got a little missionary up there. He's a, he's a strange bird, this guy. He was made. He wears... He wears these clothing, you know, turn or burn. And, I mean, he's, he's out there. He's out there on the streets and the subways. He told me, he said, Brother Cliff, he said, pray for me. He said, I got some Muslim man. He wants to kill me, wants to cut my head off because I gave him a tract. And uh, I said, I'll be praying for you, brother. <laughs> they pay almost $6,000 for just a little slot about the size of our lobby over here. By the way, these people are moving out. This is going to be available next door. We'll see. Be in prayer about that, will you? We'd like to expand, amen? All right. So that's a prayer request. We'll see what the Lord has for us. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, amen? So... I just want you to know that be filled with all the fullness of God. When you get filled with the fullness of God, you won't long ever again for the husks of this world. Like the boy in the hog pen, he came to himself. You know, the servants of my father, you know, they... They're doing a whole lot better than I am here in this hog pen. He longed to go home. And when he went home, you know what he found out? He found out his father was waiting for him and ran out to meet him. And he's waiting for you. Come. Whatever you need to do, get saved. Make sure about your salvation. Understand that God loves you. And then if, you, if, if you're saved, how's it going? Have you, have you, have you checked? I don't want to say check the boxes, but get your life in order because the Lord's coming soon. Many years ago, I got one of the most precious gifts I could ever get. One of my mentors, Leonard Ravenhill, last of the revivalists that I know of, He sent me a letter, and in that letter he sent me a poem, and he signed it. You can see the red. He said, for my dear brother Cliff, Leonard Ravenhill. I cherish that. And this is what he says. He said, read this, preacher, brother Cliff, I suggest that you paste this in the back of your Bible and read it once each time before you're going to preach. Shall I, for fear of mortal man, the Spirit's course in me restrain, or undismayed my deed in, wor in deed and word, be a true witness to my Lord? Shall I, to soothe the unholy throng, soften thy truths and smooth my tongue, to gain earth's gilded toys, or flee 
the cross endured, my Lord, by thee. Give me thy strength, O God of power. Then let winds blow or tempests roar. Thy faithful witness will I be. Tis fixed I can do all through thee. Let's stand. Let's be faithful to the end, folks. No time to get weak need now. We need to be comprehending, processing, applying these truths to our lives. Let's do that, shall we? The covenant promise, the comprehension of the promise, the comfort, the love of Christ, the capacity that he is able. We'll talk a little more about that tonight. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask to think. And the continued glory in his churches. Let the world have pride month. Let's have humble month. Amen. Let's have, let's have glorify God month. Magnify, exalt, glorify him. Father in heaven, thank you for this time. What a privilege it is to be in thy house. May we move forward in our Christian lives. May we progress. May we uh, 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 give you the glory. May we be kind, but may we stand. And having done all to stand. I wonder, as their heads are bowed, eyes are closed, maybe you'd say to me, Pastor Lawton, Pastor Cliff, I'm not sure if I died today I'd go to heaven. Please pray for me. Is there someone like that? Slip your hand up. We just want to we just want to pray for you. How about you? You're a Christian. Maybe the Holy Spirit knocked in your heart's door t- today. You got something you need to get settled. Maybe you're hanging on to some sin and and uh Certainly not something to be proud of, right? Something to be ashamed of. And it's time to let it go. Get it under the blood. And move on boldly for our God. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's room at the cross for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together number 500.